All right. I got an email. Like to hear it? Here it goes. This is from Will in Vermont. And I picked this because this was something that you had just mentioned, or a subject that you had just mentioned here recently on the program. Hi, Jim. I recently watched WCW's World War III 1995 as it was a show I had never watched before. On the card was what seemed to be an out-of-place women's tag team match featuring four Japanese women, Bull Nakano and Akira Hokuta. Hokuta? Hokutu? Pikachu? Peek at me? How, how do you say that? I believe it's Hokutu. Akira Hokutu versus Mayumi Ozaki and Cutie Suzuki. As I am watching this match, I am noticing things that I see prevalent in many of the matches of the so-called artists of modern wrestling. Undersized wrestlers doing power moves, fake-looking punches and kicks, unsafe work, nonsensical no-selling, crummy-looking synchronized spots, and kickouts of what should be match-ending moves. In this case, Bull Nakano kicking out of four top rope stomps to the chest. In all fairness, if anybody was able to kick out of four top rope stomps to the chest, it would be Bull Nakano. However, my question is this, says Will in Vermont. Why do three quarters of all elite wrestling's executive vice presidents seem to think that mid-90s Japanese women's wrestling is the standard by which wrestling should be measured? There is the question, Brian. You had mentioned when I was going on one of my tirades about not wanting to see little bitty women wrestling. You know, well, what about the Japanese women? Well, apparently Will in Vermont doesn't have no time for that either, according to this document right here. What say you? Well, once again, let me remind you what you say, which was that you liked classic all Japan women's wrestling. But obviously, when you hear from a source like Will in Vermont, it really <laughs> makes you put things in perspective. I said I didn't have any, I didn't see that much wrong with all Japan women's wrestling because I can I can't honestly I watched the tapes at the time in passing it's not like something that I studied but now it it seems that other people seem to think that it had started a trend here's what I think and I don't think that it's necessarily about the women and I don't like to just paint with a broad brush and say that you know I don't want to see any more Japanese women on the shows or anything but I do think. If you go back to, let's say, that event, or that time period, 1995, if you look at what's happening in wrestling, and then you look at wrestling in 2020, the influence of American wrestling is probably the smallest. It's Lucha Libre, and it's Japanese wrestling in the ring. And then, unfortunately, the outside the ring stuff, the what we classically call angles and promos, those are more influenced by the early part of this century's Monday Night Raw, not by classic wrestling from, I mean, the 90s, things were starting to go downhill, but before then, the 80s or the 70s or any other time. So basically what you're saying is the wrestlers for the in-ring stuff, their marks for the uh, all-action offense and video game style, and outside the ring, their marks for bad sketch comedy. Yeah, actually, I think that's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. Well, shit, I guess we could just put an end to the bit then. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you understand what I'm saying. I mean, if you look yeah. at the in-ring work, it's Lucha Libre, it's Japanese junior heavyweight wrestling, and then the outside the ring stuff, all the ang I mean, it'd be one thing if you had those kind of matches and then serious hardcore angles, but everything is just goofy right off Monday Night Raw at the turn of the century. That's what everything is. To the point where if anything is different than that, if anything for a second, appear serious like the brandy Rhodes promo a couple of weeks ago you're like oh my god where did this come from this is amazing i wish wrestling was more like this i wish wrestling is more like a serious brandy Rhodes promo <laughs> what the fuck is going on in this world because this is how far we have fallen but there again but the other thing is i'm one of those people that in the 90s was trading tapes and i loved seeing the high quality main event matches from all japan I wasn't as big on the junior heavyweights in New Japan as other people, but I enjoyed seeing them. I loved the J Cup when that came out in 1994. That was a big, big deal. Everyone wanted to see that. And I saw the big lucha stuff, but I wanted to see angles. I mean, that's one of the reasons I liked Smoky Mountain Wrestling. 
It's one of the reasons I traded for Memphis tapes in the 90s. Most people don't consider Memphis in the 90s classic Memphis, although there was great stuff in 93. There was great stuff in 90. They did great angles. They did great angles. Because they, they were trying to draw money instead of entertain themselves. That's what I wanted. I wanted promos and angles, and I also wanted to see the top matches. And I love those All Japan matches. I still do. I think they hold up. I like the seriousness in them. That's actually if, if going back to the late 70s and through the 80s. Love Japanese wrestling on tape because you got to see the dream matches with guys that, you know, Ricky Steamboat versus Nick Bockwinkle. When would that ever happen in the United States? But they didn't have any promos. There was no promos and angles, no trash talking. You had to see American wrestling to see the guys be themselves. Now... We've got no serious in-ring pro wrestling matches because everybody has decided that they want to be performers and adopted the super lucha gymnastic style. And we've got no serious promos and angles because nobody can cut them and nobody's trying to be serious if they could. So we got nada. And I blame the Japanese women's wrestling oh, just like Bill in Vermont. Oh, stop it. <laughs> 